Today, the United States government confirmed to CBS News it is keeping COVID-related travel restrictions in place. Joining me now from Charlottesville, Virginia, is Dr. Tyson Bell. He's an assistant professor of infectious diseases, international health, and pulmonary critical care at the University of Virginia. Dr. Bell, welcome. Uh, great to have you with us. I want to start with these breakthrough cases that we're hearing about. Of course, this is the, by far the minority of what the country is dealing with, but I think it's worrisome to a lot of vaccinated Americans. Can you explain to our viewers why these breakthrough cases are happening? And if vaccinated people get infected with COVID-19, are they as likely to transmit it to someone else as an unvaccinated person is who's infected with COVID-19? Thank you for having me on, and, uh, and very good question, because uh, a lot of people are wondering about breakthrough cases. So uh, just to be clear, the vaccines do offer very good protection from uh, COVID-19, particularly severe COVID-19. As you pointed out, 97% of people hospitalized with COVID-19 are unvaccinated, so very good protection there. Now, we do know at the same time the vaccines are not perfect, so we can't expect that there will be cases that break through. We saw in the trials that uh, they weren't 100% effective. So they're going to happen. Um, just for some context, out of the 160 or so million American adults who have been vaccinated, um, less than 1% of those have, uh, have uh, later gone on to de develop symptomatic COVID-19. Uh, so, you know, very good when you look at uh, symptomatic infections and very good protection from severe COVID-19. Um, I think, you know, interesting trends in uh, the breakthrough infections are that they do tend to be in older Americans, so 65 and older. Uh, they make up uh, three quarters of those infections, at least ones that are hospitalized. And so that does introduce the conversation because we know that um, older individuals can sometimes not make as, as much of a robust immune response as younger individuals. So booster shots and, you know, and, uh, and, and the like, I think may introduces that conversation. But, um, you know, the vaccines offer very good protection and we can expect to have some breakthrough cases. And we're very, very grateful for that. Those of us who are vaccinated to know that it is highly, highly unlikely that if you're vaccinated and you catch COVID, you will have to be hospitalized, which is wonderful news. But I guess one of the things that I'm hoping for a little bit more clarity about is if you're vaccinated and you catch it, you know, there's a chance you could be asymptomatic. Um, would you then be able to pass it on easily to, let's say, your unvaccinated child who may be younger than 12 and is not vaccinated? Um, is, there, is there any indication that a vaccinated person who has COVID-19 has a slightly lower viral load, let's say, and so is, it's less transmissible or is there no indication of that? Right. So the vaccines do uh, help your immune system respond quickly to the virus if you are exposed to it. So that means you're less likely to get infected in the first place. If you're less likely to get infected, you're less likely to have a high viral load. And that means you are going to be less likely to transmit it to somebody else. Uh, now, in the context of the Delta variant, which uh, does have a higher viral load in your nose and mouth, so there's just actually more of it sitting, um, uh, waiting to infect others, and it peaks earlier. Um, that changes a little bit, so it's it's not 100 percent, just like anything, but a substantially lower mm -hmm. risk of transmitting to other people if you're vaccinated and exposed and infected with COVID-19. OK, thank you. That's very, very helpful, um, doctor. Now, of course, as we know, and, and as Dr. Anthony Fauci is saying, it's the unvaccinated population that's being targeted right now by COVID. Let's listen to what Dr. Fauci said. We're going in the wrong direction. If you look at the inflection of the curve of new cases, and as you said in the run-in to this interview, that it is among the unvaccinated. And since we have 50% of the country is not fully vaccinated, that's a problem. So, Dr. Bell, because only 50 percent of adults in the U.S. are vaccinated, there are some cities like St. Louis that are reinstating those mask mandates because they want to try and slow whatever surge is happening there. Do you think it's inevitable that vaccinated individuals will have to mask up once again to get this surge under control? Um, I think that's coming, and, I, and frankly, I agree with it. Um, we have to think about, you know, what are the mechanisms we have to stop a surge? Uh, vaccination is certainly a part of the, the overall effort, and we have to you know, get to the pockets of the country that still have low rates of vaccination. But when you're in the midst of a surge, it's important to remember that it does take time for the vaccines to build up that immune response. So two weeks for Johnson & Johnson, 
uh, five weeks for the Pfizer and six weeks for Moderna, for instance. And now in the midst of a surge, a day is more like a week and a week is more like a month. And so what you have to do is stop the chain of transmission today. So the people that are infected today are infecting the people of tomorrow. In the case of the Delta variant, one person mm -hmm. is estimated to spread to around four others as opposed to the original strain, which that was two or three people. Uh, so you really have to think about the measures that can stop the chain of transmission right now. And those are mass mitigation measures, capacity constraints, and physical distancing. So I think um, you know, choices like what St. Louis did, uh, Los Angeles, another uh, area that has implemented mass mandates, I think it's coming, unfortunately, but uh, that's what we need to do to stop the chain of transmission and, and bring infections down. And doctor, to your point, the United States is confirming to CBS News that it will maintain travel restrictions citing the spread of the Delta variant. Do you think this is also the correct move, uh, you know, with this ongoing surge? I think that is uh, the correct move. Uh, you know, now in the age of travel, we can see how uh, viruses and other illnesses can travel, you know, literally across the other side of the world in less than a day. And we've seen how travel events, um, you know, for instance, early on in the pandemic on the West Coast and then from Europe to New York, a lot of these are seeded by super spreader events. When one person who's traveling and infected can spread to multiple other people, because of course, when you travel somewhere, you don't go to just stay in one location. You may interact with many other people and you're, and you're moving around and interacting in the environment. And so I think in the midst of a surge with a, a virus that's the, one of the most transmissible respiratory viruses that we've ever seen. We have to think about public health mitigation measures, so mass physical distancing and then travel restrictions are going to be a part of that as well. Dr. Tyson Bell, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you sharing your expertise with us. Thank you.